she has K AFOs. <coughs> so she's K AFOs and she's level C10. What kind of gait pattern will she use? Swing two. She's going to use a swing two or a swing through. And then where would we like? We would probably progress her. We would start on the parallel bars. Then we would progress to form crutches. Um, where would be a good place to guard your patient? And how would they? What are you concerned about? So T10. Do they have hip extensors? No. 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 So if their weight line comes forward, they're going to fold in half or jack them. So the key is they don't have hip extensors. So you're going to rely on your wide leg.
clear their exits because if they were to fall, they can they can definitely fracture. Um, usually, patients that I had, they would have a physician's approval. They would have to master all their wheelchair skills. So we mastered all their wheelchair skills, all their transfers, and this is something extra that they that they're interested in doing. Orthotics are not covered because it's um, it's not a life skill that they need if they're using if they're independent at their wheelchair. So I had a lot of um, conversations with the patient rehab, but they they typically don't pay it. Usually a self pay thing, so they um, might start with some training braces, and if they are still interested, then we'll work with the orthopedist to get them on proper orthotics to look at these things. It's a lot. It's a fun activity to do, but you have to educate them on the on the stress on the glenohumeral joint. For um, sand to floor, the goal is you would practice a safe falling in therapy. Um, and if you were to fall, our goal is to, if you were to fall, the best way is to go forward. And you're almost landing in a, a push-up position. And so you don't want to fall with your elbows locked because then there's increased risk of shoulder dislocation and separation of the AC joint. So if you can land with your elbows slightly flexed, and we want to um, kind of, we're going to do this slowly so the crutches are going to go out to the side a little bit, but not too far from you. And then, um, that's okay. And then as a therapist, you kind of get them to jackknife. I, I no longer have my guardian here. I'm just by the gate belt, and I'm going to try to help lower you down. So lay it on your arms. And um, come back up because your knees would have been. So you're just going straight down. On those arms. That's what it is. Okay, so once your patient is down there, you're with, they would gather their crutches so they're kind of lined up by their hips because we're going to use them. Um, your feet are probably going to be in a position here because you were in KA pose and so you want to have that passive dorsiflexion, uh, that passive plantar flexion, they'll be kind of in dorsiflexion, so we're going to use that range of motion. So you're in that position, so the goal is to almost come all up on your arms. You have some, hopefully some abdominals, almost like a plank position. Yeah, keep your legs straight. You can use your toes underneath you. Perfect. Walk your hands towards your legs. When you're halfway up, you're gonna grab this pole and hold it this way. Good. And then keep on walking backwards. Now grab the other pole. Keep on walking backwards, and then you can position your crutches. So floor to stand requires good upper body strength, but also good hamstring range of motion because they're kind of in that modified plantar grade position. So plantar grade is if I don't have the, the flexibility, but your legs would be straight and your palms would be on the ground. So we're using that plantar grade position to be able 